Chapter 21. Listen to the Wind. Sunrise woke Nynaeve while she slept with her back against an oak near the bank of the Aranel. For a moment she forgot her situation, then chided herself aloud. The light preserve you, woman! You could have awakened in a trollic cookpot! The others could be anywhere, across the river or ten miles downstream, if they were even alive. Angry with herself, she fought back to last night. Not even winter night or the battle before reaching Shadar Lagarth had prepared her for Mashadar. She'd been frantic as she galloped, wondering when she'd come across a trollic or fade. She'd heard them growling and shrieking behind her, and their horn blasts had chilled her to the bone. Once outside the city, she'd come across a large group of trollocs who'd rushed at her, howling and waving their catchpoles. They lifted their muzzles and beaks to smell her scent. Then to her astonishment, they turned their backs and vanished into the night. It was the most frightening thing, and had told her horse. They know the scent of who they want, and it isn't me. The I said I was right all along. Shepherd of the night, swallow her up. Nynaeve led her horse downstream, keeping a wary watch. Just because the Trollocs didn't want her last night, didn't mean they'd spare her again. She watched the ground for tracks, hoping for signs of others, and if not, she'd follow the river until reaching Whitebridge. From there, she'd head to Camelin, and even Tarvalon if needed to find her charges. It was daunting, though. She'd never been so far from Emmonsfield. Once she found them, she'd make the Aes Sedai answer for whatever happened to them. This she vowed. She saw tracks, but couldn't tell if they were Shadowspawn or horses. Four miles on, she caught the smell of wood smoke and hesitated before tying up her horse to investigate. It could be a trollic camp, but there was only one way to find out. Peering around a tree, she saw the warder dismounting, and the Aes Sedai sat on a log by a fire, boiling a kettle. Lan was telling her that all the Trollocs were gone. Four fades went south well before dawn, and there's no sign of their dead. Moraine said it was too much to hope they were all consumed within Shadar Lagoth. Lan told her he couldn't find any sign of the boys, which made Nynaeve smile at his failure, feeling it vindicated her own. Declining tea, Lan paced as he told Moraine. There were almost a thousand Trollocs last night, Moraine quipped. We were lucky they didn't all stay to search the city. The murderer must have doubted we'd hide in there, but also feared returning to Shai Al Ghul without checking. The Dark One isn't a lenient master, Lan told her. Don't evade it. You know what I'm saying. If a thousand Trollocs were here, why weren't they sent to the two rivers? There's only one answer. They were sent after we crossed the Taran, when they knew a hundred Trollocs and one Fade were not enough. How? How were they sent so far south of the Blight, so quickly and unseen? Can 10,000 be sent into the heart of Sardea, Arafel, Shyanar? The borderlands could be overrun in a year, Moraine replied. The world could be overrun in five years if we don't find those boys. It worries me too, but I have no answers. The ways are closed, and there's not been an Aes Sedai strong enough to travel since the break-in. Unless a Forsaken is loose, the light send it's not so. Let us deal with the problems we face here and now. Everything else must wait. She told Lan that one boy is across the river, and there were two faint traces down river, but those bonds broke hours ago. Nynaeve frowned, puzzled at her meaning, as Lan asked if she thinks the Fades have them. Moraine said it's possible, but she will not admit they may be dead. You know how much is at stake. I must have those boys. That Shyogul hunts them, I expect. Opposition within the tower, even the Amelin, I accept. There are always some Aes Sedai who only accept one solution, but... She cut off, sitting up straight, murmuring about watching wolves too hard to be bitten by a mouse. Looking right at the tree Nynaeve hid behind, she called out, Mistress Almira, you may come out now if you wish. Lan whirled in surprise as Nynaeve scrambled up, then stalked toward them. She felt a satisfaction at surprising the warder, then turned her anger on Moraine. What have you meshed Egwene and the boys in? What filthy Aes Sedai plots are you planning to use them in? Moraine just sipped her tea as Lan put up his arm to bar Nynaeve from nearing his ward. She tried to brush past him, but his arm wouldn't move. Moraine offered her tea. No! I wouldn't drink your tea if I was dying of thirst. You won't use Emmonsfield folk in your dirty Aes Sedai schemes. Moraine calmly told her. You have little room to talk, Wisdom, since you can wield the one power yourself, after a fashion. Nynaeve told her why not accuse her of being a trollic while she's at it. The Aes Sedai's smile was so knowing Nynaeve wanted to hit her. Moraine continued to say that she can't be face to face with a woman who can channel and not feel it. Just as Nynaeve sensed the potential in Egwene, how does she think she knew Nynaeve was behind the tree? You are no Trolloc, so that's not what I felt. So what did I sense? 
Nynaeve Almira, Wisdom of Emmonsfield, an unknowing wielder of the One Power. Lan looked surprised and speculative as she thought on how she'd known Egwene was special and would make a fine wisdom one day. Then she thought that they were working together to put her off balance and declared that she won't listen any more. Moraine insisted, though, explaining that she suspected before even meeting her. She'd heard from the villagers how their wisdom was upset at not predicting the weather this year and how normally she's so accurate at it. How wonderful her cures were, healing injuries that should have crippled, often without a scar, limp or twinge. How she was so young for the responsibility, which only strengthened her suspicions. Nynaeve insisted it was only because Mistress Baron had taught her well, and internally fumed over the villagers gossiping about her to strangers. She demanded who said she was too young. Moraine didn't answer, saying that unlike many who claim to, Nynaeve actually can listen to the wind. It's actually to do with the air and water aspects of the One Power, and doesn't need to be taught. It's an innate talent in channelers. You were born to it as was Egwene. You have learnt to handle it, as Egwene will have to learn. She then asked Nynaeve if she recalled their meeting, and how after a minute the Aes Sedai knew she was the wisdom without being told. Nynaeve remembered all too well, but denied it was possible. She'd know, then accused Moraine of trying to trick her, and it won't work. The Aes Sedai soothingly told her, why should she know? All her life she'd heard of listening to the wind as a normal ability. Nynaeve said she doesn't want to hear any more lies, yet Moraine continued. Around eight to ten years ago, there was something you wanted more than anything else, and you got it. You felt nothing at the time, but about seven to ten days later you had your first reaction to touching the true source. Maybe fever and chills that put you to bed for a few hours, then disappeared. Maybe headaches, numbness and exhilaration all mixed together, and you find yourself taking stupid chances or acting giddy, dizziness or unable to get your words right. There are others, but do you remember? Nynaeve's legs gave way and she sat heavily. She remembered, but shook her head. It had to be coincidence, or someone had told her. Marin continued, You used the power to heal either Perrin or Egwene. An affinity develops and you can sense those you have healed. In Berylon you came straight to our inn. Only those two were present at the time. Which was it? Nynaeve mumbled that it was Egwene. She'd always taken for granted her ability to know who was behind her if it was someone she'd cured. Taken for granted knowing which crops would flourish or fail, predicting the weather. Normal things for a wisdom. Not all wisdoms could listen to the wind, but the best always could. Nynaeve explained. Egwene had breakbone fever as a child, when I was an apprentice. I thought Egwene would die. I'd babysat for Egwene when she was little, and I couldn't bear to see her twisting until I thought her bones would snap. I started crying, and an hour later the fever was gone to Mistress Baron's surprise. A week later I fell to the ground in Mistress Baron's house, shaken and burning up. She put me to bed, and by supper it was gone. She dropped her head into her hands, and thought the Aes Sedai had chosen a good example. Like burn her, using the one power like an Aes Sedai. A filthy dark friend Aes Sedai. Moraine told her she was lucky to have managed a crude control of the power, even if touching the true source comes randomly. If she hadn't, it would have killed her eventually. It may kill Egwene if she doesn't allow her to go to the White Tower for training. Swallowing, Nynaeve said that if she learned how to do it, she could teach Egwene herself. There's no need for her to go to Tower Valon and get mixed up in intrigues. Shaking her head, Moraine told her that Aes Sedai search for girls born with the ability to touch the true source as keenly as they do the men. It's not just to increase their numbers or fear of misuse of the power. The rough control they learn is rarely enough to do damage. They're trying to save the lives of those who can't manage any control. Nynaeve insisted that the effects she suffered weren't enough to kill, and they stopped after a few months. Moraine explains that those were only the reactions to channeling, each time coming closer to the moment of touching the source, until they're instantaneous. At that point the clock starts to tick, a year or two usually. For every four women born with the ability, only one will survive without training. It's not as horrible as the death men experience, but it's still fatal. Convulsions, screaming, it can take days and once it starts, there's nothing any Aes Sedai can do about it. Nynaeve accused her of lying and finding things out by asking the villagers, such as Egwene's fever. Gently, Moraine told her that she knows she's not lying. More reluctantly than anything she'd ever done, Nynaeve nodded. It had been a stubborn refusal to deny what was obvious. Mistress Baron's first apprentice had died exactly the way Moraine described while Nynaeve was still a child. 
There was also a young apprentice wisdom in Devon Wright who died a few years ago. She could listen to the wind too. Moraine told her that she has great potential and with training may be more powerful than Egwene, who herself has the ability to be the most powerful Aes Sedai in centuries. Nynaeve cried, No! I'll have nothing to do with! She trailed off as she realised it was nonsense to keep denying her ability. She asked him not to tell anyone about this, choking on the word please. Moraine nodded and Nynaeve regained some spirit, declaring that it doesn't explain what she wants with the boys. Moraine explained that the Dark One wants them, and she opposes that. It's that simple. She told Lan they'll be riding south and doubts the Wisdom will be joining them. Nynaeve could tell she was trying to put her back up, so she'd go home and leave the boys to her. She declared that she would be going with them. They can't stop her. Lan said no one would stop her, then asked Moraine if it's part of the pattern. The Aes Sedai says perhaps, wishing to speak with Min again. Lan turned to her, saying Nynaeve was welcome to come, but there had been a hesitation in his words, an unspoken honorific of Sedai after her name, and she bristled, taking it as mocking. He said he'd fetch her horse and she smiled at how hard she'd made it to find her mount. It would be satisfying when he returned empty-handed. She asked Moraine why South when one of the boys is across the river. Moraine explained that she gave each boy a token that she can track, as long as they're alive and have them. She assured Nynaeve it's nothing like the water bond, and she hopes the boy across the river will head to Whitebridge. But for now, her focus must be on the two downriver. They're in the greater danger. Nynaeve asked where Egwene was. She hasn't been mentioned at all. Moraine admitted that she doesn't know, but hopes she's safe. She could be with the boy over the river, or with the two downstream. But she's not wanted by the Dark One, so Moraine can't focus on her. Nynaeve wanted to scream. Egwene could be alone and hurt, but just as likely she could be with one of the boys. She hated that the Aes Sedai was right. Blinking back tears, she turned so Moraine would not see. She felt useless as their wisdom. Lan returned with her horse, eyes widening at her tears. She turned her back on him, wiping her face. How dare he mock her crying. Moraine asked if she was coming, and with a last look around for Egwene, Nynaeve mounted. Nynaeve stared at the Aes Sedai's back, thinking that if Egwene and the boys weren't safe, her power would not protect her from Nynaeve. I can use it too, woman. You told me yourself. I can use it against you. Thanks for listening. Please like, share and subscribe and help get a new channel off the ground. Thank you.